so yeah, to uh, start off with, I'll again I'll pro- go back to probably what it's been near about ten days now. The T Twenty World okay. Cup win and uh, the euphoria around it. I had the opportunity to listen to you on other podcasts that you were on very timely. Again, yeah. I mean, you you probably would have spoken about it a lot. Now, how 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 significant was it? I mean, how important was it? And maybe you know, it, 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 there were so many emotions on the players and plus uh, the people who are watching it. I just talked to you about the significance of it. Everybody had talked about India deserved it and everything, but the significance for the senior players, the teams there, and having you know been uh, coming so close yet so far, the significance of that win. I think you know, as the Indian team, there is so much pressure on you to win everything. Uh, so you know, the players after 19th of November, when they kind of couldn't clear that last hurdle against Australia, uh, the pressure was always on India uh, in this in this World Cup. Uh, so 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 I think it was a sigh of relief uh, for the Indian team. But I would like to give this a little more, a little of a, a like more of a deeper concept. Uh, you know. Uh, or a deeper context. Now, if you look at T20, uh, and for example, if you look at the ICC's future tours program, annual calendar, uh, and, and I think the ODIs will, uh, and the T20s will will start increasing. And India is at the cusp of, uh, you know, forming an all new T20 team. You are seeing what our young team in Zimbabwe uh, is capable of right now. So I think the context was. Uh, deeper in terms of two senior players phasing out of the team and then a brand new young team uh, coming into being is always better when that team uh, it comes into being after a victory you know because then all the all the positives are are uh, at the bedrock of of that new team uh, and there is no redemption factor uh, for that new team if uh, that would have been the case if India had lost uh, the final. Because pe- people would have said, oh, you know, you had Virat and you had Rohit and you lost the 50-over final, you lost the T20 final. Now, here is a team and all the pressure is on that team uh, to redeem themselves. Yeah. Uh, so, that redemption factor is in there. So, now I think we will go in with a brand new T20 team. And... Uh, uh, and try and put distance amongst us and the rest of the world because I think that is a distinct possibility because Australia will also go through a lot of changes. You'll have three or four of their players phasing out, uh, two or three of the English players also phasing out probably. So this is a good time for a young Indian team to come in and uh, and, and 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 you know stamp themselves as the best team in the world. Absolutely. And the future definitely seems bright for this Indian team, despite the retirements of the senior pros that you mentioned. So, yeah, just looking at four debutants uh, we have had uh, for India and the two Zimbabwe T20s that have played out. Uh, Abhishek, uh, Ryan, Dhruv uh, and uh, Sudarshan, each having their own strengths. And you've been a selector. You've been part of the CAC. You've seen these uh, players and the entire Indian setup, you know, taking them forward. Who among these four, I mean, or what may be anyone outside this group also, you think is definitely in for the long haul? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, there are two or three players who are in for the long haul across formats. Uh, so, yeah. if you look at Rituraj Gaikwad, Jaiswal, uh, these are guys who will be, uh, you know, Lambi Res Ke Gode across the formats. Uh, for, for the T20 format, apart from the names you took, I think Tilak Verma uh, is a is a fantastic prospect as well because he can bowl, uh, and we need somebody at five or six who can bowl. Uh, the the problem with the Indian team has been that of the sixth bowler. So I think Tilak Verma fits well into into that role. Uh, but the rest of the guys are all fantastic. I think uh, you will now see a, a brand new uh, batting lineup. Uh, with uh, with one 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 or two points of stability uh, will be that Rishabh Pant will bat number three, uh, you know Sky will bat four and Hardik will bat five. So you will see that emerging as the new backbone uh, of the Indian team, which currently had Virat and Rohit as the backbone. But the three names that I mentioned, uh, Pant at three, Sky at four, and Hardik at five, will form that new backbone. Definitely. Uh, and the other important aspect is with Rohit Sharma, you know, quitting uh, the T20 format, the captaincy. I mean, there's a vacancy there. Hardik seemed to be an obvious choice, seems to be. Uh, but 
do you think that's that straightforward uh, a choice? You know, you're seeing Shubman Gill leading the T20 in Zimbabwe. The name of KL Rahul is also there in the mix. So how do you think, you know, India will go, you know, forward with this? Because it's pretty much certain Rohit Sharma will be there for the ODS and the test and T20 will have somebody different. So there are uh, different uh, for captains for white ball and red ball cricket. Yeah, uh, I think Hardik Pandya will be the natural choice. Uh, I think Rishabh Pant will then become uh, his vice captain, according to me. But but there are four players in the actual captaincy stakes going into the future, and that's Hardik Pandya, Rishabh Pant, Shreyas Sayer, and KL Rahul. Let's not forget that KL Rahul is a fantastic player. Uh, there have been some reports about him not being available for T for ODI cricket. I'm not sure how authentic they are, but uh, but he is again a, a cross format a cross format player. Uh, so the, here the, are the four names. I think Shreya Sayer will need to cement his place in the T20 side before he can uh, be thought of as a captain. But here are the four young leaders, uh, you know, and we are seeing them in the IPL as well. So here are the four young leaders, of, uh, and one of them will will uh, will uh, be the guy for the long term. We most definitely have a long, you know, uh, strong bench ring when it comes to uh, batting. But what about bowling? I mean, uh, there's Shami at 33, Bumrah is 30, so is Siraj. I mean, still two, three years time before India should start seriously looking for replacement. But among the current lo uh, lot, I mean, Arshdeep Singh, you've been seeing how impressive he, ha he has been under pressure. You have yeah. an Avish, you have a Khalil, all of those guys coming, Harsh guys like Harshad Rana. You know, doing yeah. so well in IPL. There's a tear away pacer named Mayank Yadav. We don't know what the future holds for that uh, the young boy. But then again, how impressed are you? And do, who do you consider among these young lot the most, you know, likely to be the successors to a Bumrah, a Suraj or a Shami? I think uh, apart apart from the names that you mentioned, I feel Avesh Khan is a very, very good prospect. Uh, I also... Uh, uh, you know, I also think Khalil, if he can keep uh, moving the ball consistently, uh, is 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 somebody who is uh, who's who's an interesting prospect as well. So I'm not really worried from a, a fast bowling uh, perspective, uh, but I think we need to now uh, look at uh, you know look at a couple of other uh, risk spinners as well. Uh, maybe a, a, a you know a direct kind of uh, a direct. Uh, uh, you know, uh, replacement for Jadeja is probably Akshar Patel. So, we are lucky from that perspective. But there will be one gap in the team, which is a batsman who bowls regularly. And I think that is why they uh, they tried Shivam Dubey as well this time. Uh, hoping that Shivam Dubey can in the future also hold his spot. But I think Tilak Verma there is another, uh, uh, is, is another prospect. So, from a fast bowling perspective, to answer your question, I'm not worried. There are... Uh, there are five or six bowlers who can step into the shoes. Um, I think it's it's going to be interesting on how the BCCI uh, plans the next two or three years of cricket. Uh, because uh, coming up in December is a big series in Australia. In, in 2025, India go to England for a big series. So they will want to keep Shami uh, and Bumrah fresh uh, you know, for that series. So you will see a lot of rotation, a lot of workload management uh, happening right now. Uh, but but uh, overall, we seem to be in a very, very good shape uh, going into the next 10 years, uh, wherein let's not forget that cricket will also become an Olympic sport. So, it will assume yeah. greater proportions yeah. globally. So, uh, all in all, a good time for India, uh, you know, set up by that fantastic win, uh, you know, in the Caribbean. Right, right. And in that uh, batters uh, who can bowl, I think uh, Abhishek Sharma is also a very you know interesting choice there. I mean, just on that Yuvraj Singh bowl, it seems. Absolutely right. I mean, you, you hit the nail on the head. You know, if you have somebody like that opening the batting uh, and then being able to bowl uh, three or four overs as well, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's fantastic, right? Remember our 2011 World Cup winning team you had? You had so many guys... Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, who could who could, could hold their arms over? Yeah. yeah, you had Sachin, you had Seva, you had UV, you had Raina, uh, you had four guys who could literally bowl 40 overs if, if push comes to shove. Uh, you know, exactly. so that's the kind of uh, versatility uh, the BCCI will will be will be looking for. Uh, you know, uh, so yeah. Absolutely. Uh, and when you talk about push comes to shove, it's one area where Indian cricket, it seems that push will come to shove is wicket keeping. There's an explosion of, you know, wicket keepers, so talented young wicket keepers, Rishabh Pankishan, Jurel, Samson, Jitesh Sharma. Uh, 
and you 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 all also saw Rithraj Gaikwad doing a bit of wicket keeping, wicket keeping in the I think Maharashtra Premier League, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's been an explosion. I mean, what do you see? This you know the reason behind is 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 it only the Dhoni effect? It's just that, or do you see anything far new, uh, beyond that? I think it's the IPL effect. Uh, you know, uh, because uh, the IPL teams uh, obviously need keepers, so you need. Uh, 8x the number of keepers uh, than you needed, you know, before the IPL came around. So obviously, uh, it, it's it's uh, to a certain part is Mahi's had such a huge huge legacy on this game, but I think it's due to the IPL. Due to the IPL, right, right. Uh, talking about Rohit Sharma, uh, Virat Kohli, and Ravindra Jadeja all uh, retired from the T20Is and hitting uh, the ball. Hitting, you know, from ball one became beca has become a norm now. I mean, you'd see there was a lot of chatter about Virat Kohli and others, you know, who probably play the sheet anchor role or anchor. Uh, plenty has been talked about that. Do you think that a role of an anchor is be is getting diminished in the T20 format, uh, or is it something that will stay? I mean, it is like beat beat ODI uh, or T20. That form of you know play will definitely remain. I think an anchor in the 50 overs format will 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 def is is needed. If you ask me, you need somebody to bat 35, 40 overs, uh, and and that is uh, there is a true reason. Uh, you know, there's a reason for existence for that anchor kind of a uh, profile for the 50 overs game. But uh, when it for T20 cricket, there's no anchor anchor here. You just have to go and uh, bang it <laughs> basically. You know, uh, from the first ball till the last ball. And, and just hope that everything connects. So as a batsman, you're hoping everything connects. And as, as a bowler, you are, uh, you know, saying your Hanuman Chalisa quietly, <laughs> hoping that uh, the batsman doesn't connect. Uh, so it, it's just a slam-bang game. Uh, there isn't uh, too much uh, uh, to think about from an anchor perspective. They, yes, there is definitely a role for captaincy uh, in a T20 game. And I think we saw Rohit doing that uh, marvelously. Right, and you talked about there's no you know space uh, for uh, an anchor in T20 crash and bang, and I, I mean somebody like Virat Kohli could do it at this stage. So were you surprised by the kind with with uh, him announcing the retirement, looking at his ability and the fitness that he still has? Yeah, I think you know the the kind of uh, effort which Virat has put into his career for the last ten or twelve years. Uh, I always felt that he would kind of retire sooner rather than later. Uh, so I'm not surprised at all. I think that they they still have. Both Rohit and Virat still have very strong World Test Championship ambitions, uh, so I think they will be tuning into that now. Uh, and and uh, playing those 15-20 games lesser a year for India will give their body some breathing space. So I think good decision coming at the right time. We are lucky to have a huge pipeline of players. The BCCI needs to be thanked for that, Vinit. You know because uh, this pipeline yeah. has come about through Under 19 and India A tours, uh, and uh, and all these tours need capital. Uh, so the BCCI has never shirked from, you know, investing capital into an India A team shadowing the main team in Australia uh, or an India A team shadowing a main team in England. They've never thought twice about it. Uh, so, uh, so it's not often mentioned, but the BCCI's uh, capital allocation when it when it comes to development of cricket has been nothing short of fantastic. Great, yeah, yeah, and it gives me that question. And Sophia gives me a great segue to my next question. That is, you talked about the pipeline, you talked about the structure, but you need to have somebody to 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 really mold them, and that probably was, you know, no better than Rahul Dravid. And again, we talked about the emotions for Virat Kohli, Rohit Sharma, and others. It was 2007 West Indies. Rahul Dravid probably was at his lowest ebb as a as a skipper, and again, you know, uh, so many years later. Holding that trophy, the emotions. Just talk to me about the, you know, uh, the highlights of, uh, of of Rahul Dravid as a head coach. What, what what would you think? He recently believed that you know judging a coach just purely on the results is not the right thing. It's about the environment, the success, building connections. Just your thoughts on Rahul Dravid's tenure as a coach because he was under fire a lot of times, but I think pro probably was the right way to end uh, you know that tenure for him as well. I think uh, what I said to start off the conversation is the the platform, the floor plate which the Indian team has now with this victory to go on and become the best team in the world across formats. Now, I'm not saying this as an Indian who loves his country and loves his team, but I think the Indian team really has a, uh, has a very authentic and a, a achievable opportunity 
of being the best team across formats by a distance now when you when you double click on why this has happened then you go back to the five years which ravi shastri was the coach and the three years which rahul dravid was the coach and and you know how they brought about uh, this entire culture of of one team how they've channeled the right uh, players from uh, uh, from the A- uh, indian a setup into the team you know all these small things don't get spoken about uh, so rahul yeah. is right when he when you say that you can't judge a coach by the results but i would i would actually say that he's done a fantastic job because he has enabled uh, this springboard so whoever becomes the next coach has a real opportunity to put distance between india and the next team and like i said with the olympics also embracing cricket the relevance of cricket will go up across the world uh, so so the 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 responsibility or, or the expectation from an indian team uh, will also get bigger and i think rahul has left them at uh, you know not left them as in not not relief but he has brought them to a stage uh, where where all these audacious goals look possible right uh, and that's rahul dravid for you right uh, so that brings me to the next question you're part of uh, the cac cricket advisory committee looking at uh, the next indian coach you had uh, done done uh, interviews and all it was a very you know comprehensive jd for, for the indian coach Uh, what do you look in you know in 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 the ideal candidate so to speak you talked about rahul dravid the candidate and also is that the blue, blueprint you follow or is no it's not like for everyone it's different and whatever who are you interview is different yeah i, I think uh, I, i think uh, it it depends on what on where you are as a team you know so three years back we were in a different place as a team where we were ready to take on this mantle because it just beat in australia i think that was one of ravi's last series Uh, and then rahul was taking the team uh, from there on uh, so so it it's it depends on where you are so so for me uh, you know the next 3 or 4 years the icc already has their future to us program uh, so for me it's a question of how the how is the coach going to think about this bank of players uh, this bank of amazing talent that he uh, that whoever it is will inherit uh, and and then how is he going to put this bank Uh, and and have uh, and have the ideal flying formation beneath across test matches odis and t20s uh, how is he going to manage the workloads uh, of the bumrahs of the shamis of the world beaters uh, let's not forget that india will have two at least two great bowlers in their lineup uh, in in uh, in test matches the num- the third one is r ashwin uh, for example so yeah. it's uh, you know so how is he going to manage these champions uh, and provide some longevity so that uh you know the, you you reach the 2027 world cup uh, odi world cup in a position of strength you reach the 2026 world cup t20 in a position of strength and the 28 world cup uh, so so these are all the things which really uh, excite me uh, on on how that candidate is thinking uh, in terms of how is he going to manage that human capital uh, and how is he going to strengthen that human capital for the next 3 or 4 years of his term right 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 uh, and uh, one final question uh, i think india and cricket always go in hand in hand and we can go on and on and on about cricket it's a never ending topic but often it leads to other sports getting a bit of a bit sideline but there's always potential for india to do well in other sports looking at the size the ability the potential the country has uh, and sometimes it feels like it just needs uh, that uh, right direction or right push uh, in that right direction uh, you've been part of uh, an organization which looks at uh, stuff like that can you just speak about that a bit more yeah we uh, i run a i run an uh, uh, i run a sports app called kelo more uh, you can find it on the app store basically what we want, what we are trying to do is bring access to sport very easily uh to indians uh, so if you want to play a game of box cricket uh, we need for example and you're wondering which box cricket venue do i go to you can just enter your current location and kelomore's app will uh, throw up six or seven venues around you and you can go and be, uh, book or uh, you know slots uh, or or uh, at those venues similarly badminton venues uh, football venues so, so we're uh, aggregating the supply side of sport and we've put it on on one app and to your earlier question uh, you know about other sports uh you know there's such a huge eruption in sports participation uh in india at all levels right from middle aged people who are uh, playing recreationally to 
uh, to uh, children from schools, uh, from tier two, tier three, tier four towns. Uh, everybody is willing to play sport. And I will tell you one thing that after these Paris Olympics, uh, the crescendo will rise even higher. Uh, so it becomes incumbent on a sports loving person like me to ensure that millions of Indians get access uh, to sport. And that's what Kilo More is trying to do. Right now, we have a great app which allows you to book uh, sports venues. Uh, uh, in the next two, three months, we will uh, enable you to book thousands of certified coaches across sports as well. Uh, so we are here to ignite your journey into sport. Great, great, fantastic. And I hope, uh, you know, India also achieves great heights as it has achieved in cricket as well. And uh, yeah. thank you. Thank you, Jatin, for your time. It was fantastic uh, speaking to you and uh, all the best uh, for your endeavors as well. Thank great. you so much, Jatin. Really enjoyed it. I hope we can speak soon again. Thanks. Most definitely. Most definitely. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.